Very welcome here to Chadwick's Wexford Park for live coverage of the second of the semi-finals in the Courtyard Ferns Intermediate Hurling Championship between Owler Tabalak and Buffers Alley. We're almost ready to go here. We see one big change on the Owler team, number 23, Sean Murphy starts in the middle of the field, Ed. Yeah, I see Sean Murphy starting and Morta Doyle is starting too, you know. Uh, Buffers Alley have five under 19s that won last Wednesday night and they're starting 15. Ball kicked over towards Lorcan, Lorcan Nimmo. Nimmo at the far side who's starting as well. He's been marked there by Jack Toomey. Nimmo does well to get it up. Plays it back towards Connor O'Leary out to the far side. Jack Roach is there. The number five on his back. The shot from Roach is the first chance of the game. This is going to be short. Darren O'Brien is there to gather it. Plays it out towards Kieran Kenny. Sent down long towards Seamus O'Hagan. Out in front of Connor Goff. Well gathered and that's a foul. Free in for Buffers Alley. Yeah, shame he came out there, won a great ball, got himself a free, and listen, a lot hinges on him as a young man, but uh, as he played very well in the under-19s, he's, even at this age, he's probably going to be their main ball winner for the next foreseeable future, and that was a great early touch for him, and it's surely going to be a, a point here for Buffers Alley, surely. So the first scoring chance of the game is pointed by Paul O'Leary for Buffers Alley. They go into the lead and they'll be hoping to keep it, no doubt it. Yeah, it's a good start for the alley. Hagen looked very sharp there after his exploits uh, Wednesday night. Hook out taken down by Pat Kenny, sends it forward towards Paul O'Leary. O'Leary cuts back inside, sends it low. Kevin Sheridan does well to gather that one up, hooked. Ball only clear and sunny as far as Paul O'Leary. Hooked as well by Sean Murphy and uh, line ball here. The linesmen, the referee for this game is David Jenkins. The linesmen are Philip Murphy and Eamon Furlong, and the fourth official is Dan Crosby. I think Buffers Alley seem to be setting up. I think with Sean Murphy seems to be the spare man up here in their half back line, and I'm not exactly sure who Owler looks to be their spare man, but definitely Sean looks to be uh, seems to be the plus one as they call it here for Buffers Alley. The referee just having a word with Martha Doyle and John Farrell. Line ball taken by Billy Dunn. Good ball up towards the full forward line. Kieran Kenny is out there in front of Garrett Sinnott. They've had many battles over the years inside in that full forward line, but that's a loose hand pass. Murta Doyle has it, lays it off to Garrett Sinnott. First chance for Owler. Sinnott cuts inside. Chance of a goal here. Hand pass across to Nicky Kerwin. The goal man over the years for Owler. Fumbles it, has it up inside to Larkin Nimmo. Cuts back, flicks it. Darren O'Brien is there. A bit of a panic play there from uh, Owler in the end. Yeah, how often do we see that combination? Nicky Kerwin and Garrett's in it. Kevin Sheridan flicks this one forward. Murta Doyle has it now. Billy Dunn. Turns it in nicely and over the bar for Owler's first score of the game. Yeah, listen, it was a good movement up here to the wing. It was great scoring to the wind, I think, by uh, Billy, was it? Yeah, it was a good score off his left hand side and a nice early setter now for Owler the Ballack as well. Darren O'Brien, the sun is in the eyes of the midfielders as O'Mara breaks onto this one. He had a fine game on Wednesday night for the under-19s and it started well. Yeah, this game has started very well. It's, it's a higher tempo than the last match, you know, and O'Mara got on the ball there and put it over the bar. Puck out his aim towards Murta Doyle, but it's a little bit away from him. A line ball at the far side for Buffers Alley. Buffers Alley have a strong enough win this half as well, Peter, so we'd be interested to see if they can get any sort of a lead going up to half time. Nine ball taken short. Pat Kenny wins it up, sends it down on more shield in his eyes there from the sun. Gathers it well. Out as far as Anthony Roach. Long clearance down on top of Lark and Nimmo here. If he can win this one, he'll be doing well. The ball is spilled. Jack Toomey now plays it up towards Willie Doran. Barry Kyo gets there ahead of Paul O'Leary. And pass back to Dara Hayes. Long clearance sent out towards the far side. Murta Doyle is over there. John Farrell does well. Ball breaks to Owen O'Mara. Flick forward as far as Cormac Walsh. But for Zali certainly have started well. O'Mara has the run here on Sean Murphy. Chance of a second score for O'Mara. And that one is over the bar. Yeah, listen, two really good early scores from Owen and following on from his really good performance in the 19s. 
And uh, yeah, Buffers Alley are uh, listen, they're, they're happy in a happy place at the moment, in it, that's for sure. Short puck out goes to Sean Murphy. That ball out is a poor one down the throat of Ross Donahue. Shot is taken, it's sent very high from in around the middle. Dara Hayes is waving it wide, but the umpire is giving oh, the that's point. Some score by Ross Donahue. He was the man the last day against Bunclaw, he's scoring five points, but that's a great score. There's a great tempo to this game, Peter. There is, it certainly started at a very fast pace here. Ball sent out towards the far side again. Jack Toomey is there to pick it up. Sent all the way down. High ball down towards Cormac Walsh. Anthony Roach now. Ball finds its way all the way through as far as Murta Doyle. John Farrell is right beside him, does well. Doyle has it up the next second time. Five and a half minutes gone here. The ball sent in towards Nicky Kerwin. Shelley Roach is beside him. Referee spots no foul there. Ross Donahue cuts inside. Launch. Tries to launch it. Garrett Sinnott is there. Standing and striking in a game as high paced as this is normally a recipe for disaster. As Larkin Nimmo has it now. Has Anthony Roach, or Jack Roach, I should say, in support. Chance for Roach's second shot at the posts. And it's gone over the bar this time. Yeah, Jack Roach, if you remember, he played really well against Corey in the county semi final two years ago, and he seems to be following it on today. A great score. I think Owlers seem to be struggling, I think, Peter, with their puck out strategy at the moment. If it maybe two or three puck outs um, Dara has over to sit to the open side of the stand there. There doesn't seem to be any Owler player expecting it, so I probably expect him maybe to be. Uh, get that sorted now the next few minutes because they can't afford to keep hitting the balls away even though that did result at the very end of it in a score but it wasn't one that they're winning directly and if they don't win direct ball over Zali are definitely going to get a chance at the other end Darren O'Brien's puck out is sent over towards the far side. Cormac Walsh rises high, batted away by Anthony Roach. Jack Roach back to Anthony. Long clearance. Again, Kieran Kenny reads this one well. Out in front of Garrett Sinnott. Good work up there by Larkin Nimmo to block down Kenny, but the ball is out over the line. Yeah, a good battle between Garrett Sinnott and Kieran Kenny so far. I'd expect Billy Dunn to go for this one, Peter. Billy strikes it well, and that's turning in nicely and over the bar, Paul. Ah, yeah, this is a really good score from Billy. He's deadly. He's just saved any of them place balls. Free sideline cost. That was a really, really good score. And so I said, Owler only a point down into the breeze, even though Prof. Ali had made the better start. So I said, Owler and Ballard are quite happy as well. John Farrell now sends it out towards the far side. That's a poor ball straight down to where Jack Roach was. Roach carries it forward. Blocked down by Owen McNulty. I don't know who's going to be booked here now. I hear the referee calling him over. Yep, so a yellow card there for Ross Dunahoo. We had a frantic, we've had a frantic start, I suppose, Paul. A chance, a, a bit of a lull in, the, in proceedings yeah, there yeah, for a moment yeah. or two. Definitely, and Buffers Alley, I suppose, were the main orchestrators of that frantic start, but Owler will come to grips with the game now. And is that going to be another great score? No, no this wide. time it's gone just to the left. First wide of the game for Owler, I think. Darren O'Brien, puck out down towards Seamus O'Hagan. His arm has been held by Connor Goff, and a free in. The 
didn't spot that one, Peter, but was it free? Was ahead, do you think? I didn't really spot yeah, it. Yeah, it's, it's hard to know. I think Bottom just went, he was probably trying to hold his catch in hand, get on his catch in hand, but I don't know whether it was a foul or not. And Paul O'Leary points the free. That's two points now for O'Leary. Buffers Alley lead by two again. Short puck out was almost intercepted by Seamus O'Hagan. Anthony Roach has it now. Up towards Tommy Storey. It goes past him. Cormac Walsh is there to gather it up. Throws it up ahead of himself. Follows it on. Good pace being shown by Walsh. He's getting away. There's an overlap here, lays it off. Sean Murphy is way up the field, good defending by Owen Moore. Jack Roach now, clearance up the line. Ball falls with Owen McNulty inside here to Cormac Walsh. Just a really good chance of a score for Buffers Alley. And Cormac Walsh puts it over the bar. Yeah, then a great score there. He only made a long burst and run down the field, only moments earlier so listen Cormac is a big influence on the game as well so far he was just eating up ground that time he went on the solo run Peter you know and it could have been a goal Sean Murphy now hand passes it off to Tommy Story. long ball in towards the edge of the 20 metre line great grab by Nicky Kerwin makes a bit of ground as foul the free in to Owlert yeah, for a small man, he's very well able to catch the ball in there and running directly at goal like he always does. Drew the foul and was blatant free and a chance for Owl to go two behind. And Billy Dunn makes no mistake with the free. It's three points now for Dunn. One from play, one from a line ball and one from a free. Sean Murphy is down receiving a bit of attention here on his own 65 maybe possibly there's something wrong or possibly yeah, just to take a little I momentum out yeah, of the game maybe, maybe so I, th I think it's his first start this year am I right yeah. with the way the fixtures are we haven't been able to get to them all now there obviously is something wrong with it's Sean's calf, calf there yeah. and when you don't play games at match pace they're the sort of things yeah. you, your calves get tight your quads get tight Nothing can replicate a match, you know. You can do all the training you want. Tommy Story plays it across. Nicky Kerwin gets there first. A nice catch. Conor O'Leary now breaking onto it. Fouled. Plays an advantage to referee. And a free again to Owlert. And Owlert looked dangerous coming off the shoulder like that, Paul. Yeah, and that's usually what you have to do when you're playing to a win like that. It's the running short hand pass game. And we know Owlert are very, very good at that probably the best to make sure for many years and they're going to stick with it for this first half anyway and yeah it's it's paying dividends because the kind of the, they're, they're, I suppose they're enticing Buffer Sally into to fouling them and at the moment Buffer Sally just don't seem to get their tackles in properly and are fouling them Nicky Kerman looks extremely sharp the first three balls that went in Paul oh, he does and Billy Dunn dissects the post with that free and he has four now. Darren O'Brien targets Shami O'Hagan again. Anthony Roach out to Murta Doyle. Good ball forward towards Nicky Kerwin. I thought it was just going to get past uh, Kevin Roach but he read it well and gets it out as far as Sean Murphy there's an advantage for Buffers Alley the advantage is over now Sean Murphy carries it forward the hand pass is loose Murta Doyle now plays a low to Billy Dunn first touch is not good out for a line ball yeah Sean was just unfortunate there he, he thought a man around to space but he didn't and I suppose it's still nip and tuck here and Buffers Alley as I said it's, it's kind of funny both teams would be happy enough in the position they're in at the moment after 15 just coming up to 15 minutes It's actually a massive crowd here Peter for an intermediate semi-final And the referee has awarded a free to Owlert or sorry to Buffers Alley
Paul O'Leary is coming out to take it. Either after withdrawing uh, Cormac Welch out the field like they did against Montlaudy, so it'll be interesting to see will Owler pick him up. And Paul O'Leary's free this time has gone to the left and wide, and I think that's the first wide for Buffers Alley. The match is going ahead. Puck out taken and uh, none of us were concentrating on that one. We were waiting for Dara Hayes to puck it out. He gave out too quickly, did he? Or the man inside the 21, something in here. Short puck out goes to Anthony Roach. Ball sent straight down the middle. Bounces out of the hand of Lark and Nimmo. Sean Murphy meets it at pace but can't get the pass out to Billy Dunn. Owen McNulty has it back to Sean Murphy. The quick clearance is down here but it's down to an area that favours Outert. In fact, it's going over the line for an Outert line ball. Goff takes it, Barry Kyo adds to it. Bobbles around here. Gathered up really neatly by Seamus O'Hagan. Takes on Barry Kyo. Still O'Hagan now, turns strike, is going to twist away, I think, from the post. And wide. Yeah, it wasn't that far away now, you know, he done well there. I just don't think Sean Murphy is moving very well on that leg. Anthony Roach now going to shoot from 65 metres out. And a wide. Right, yeah, it's kind of a couple of minutes now of neither team really able to put any kind of stamp authority onto the game and a lot of pot shots and mm. the quality's probably dipped a little bit now in the last five or six minutes. Yeah. Puck out goes over to the far side. Kevin Roach misses it. Locked down by Conor O'Leary and out for a line ball. Shortly, quickly taken. A bit too short. Too short. Tricky one that the player was on the move when he received it. You have to be 13 metres away when the when the line ball is struck. You don't have to be 13 metres away receiving it. So, free to Outer to the far side. Billy Dunn to take it. And he sent this one wide. Darren O'Brien's puck out again, sent down here towards Seamus O'Hagan. Connor Goff gathers it, but takes it out over the sideline. We've had a lot of line balls in the game, Ed. Yeah, a lot of them down in front of us. I think that was more of a free than the last one, Paul, myself. Yeah. There was definitely contact there, you know. I think maybe he didn't want to give this one then, though. Cause yeah. He'd have to give him one kind of half softish one. He yeah. not to upset the other boys anymore. Ross Donahue to take this one about 40 metres out. Doesn't connect with it well. Goes trickling in towards Owen Moore. Out towards Conor O'Leary. Long clearance from O'Leary. Favours the alley backs. Here on Kenny. Plays it back up the same line here. Pat Kenny meets it. An advantage being played to Buffers Alley. Kenny plays it inside here to Jack Toomey who spills it. Flicked away by Conor O'Leary. Sean Murphy now. Up forward to Kevin Sheridan. John Farrell intercepts it. 
shoulder, says the referee. Farrell gets it back to Sean Murphy. Murphy makes a bit of ground with it now. Off to Edward Harney. That's a good, well read by Sean Murphy. It wasn't a great ball. The ball hits the referee. We have play on. There's a high tackle. Gareth Sinnott has gone down injured. Edward Harney is going to be spoken to. Yeah, the ball hit the referee there. I think he should have thrown it in, like, you know. That's usually the way, Paul, when the ball yeah, hits yeah, the referee. I think, I think when it hits it with all, but it's, it's kind of a game where there's, there's so many mistakes by each by yeah. either team that I think it's kind of like they're not expecting all these mistakes. Yeah. And it's it's very much, listen, at the moment, it's not very exciting and fair. And I think both teams, I don't know whether it's nervous or not, but the last five or six or seven minutes, there's been too many mistakes, just say, for, if I say for both teams' likings. And you can imagine it's definitely suiting out of the Ballack because they're still only that one point down. They've every chance probably to equalise here. and. I just think Buffers Alley, I don't know, they just maybe they just need to concentrate more on just winning that primary possession because there's too many fumbles out of them. Billy Dunn is going to take the free, a chance for Elder Tobalock to draw level. It's not an easy free, he's facing into the breeze. Strikes it well though and had the distance plenty but not the accuracy on this occasion. Yeah, it was a nice height he hit it at too, like, you know. Darren O'Brien plays it out to Kevin Roach. He in turn plays it up towards the full forward. Willie Dorn and Barry Kyo is in there to win it. Carried out powerfully by Kyo. The advantage being played to Owler. Billy Dunn has it. Good ball across to Tommy Story. He saw the point. Story might even give it back to Dunn this time. The long hand pass out here towards the sideline. Billy Dunn plays it back. Larkin Nimmo. Good dummy from Nimmo. Dunn has gone down injured. There was a late chop on him and a free to Owler, Paul. Yeah, just Owler's handling there and striking just off the hand is very good. They played it around nicely against the wind. Got themselves a free again. There was a bit of a late chop there on Billy. And I could imagine he's definitely going to try to make amends for the last one. But just Owler and the Ballack seem to be that bit more composed when they have the ball. And uh, I think Buffer Sally just... They're work, like they're working out from the goal well, but it's the next, it's the second ball that's not working for them at all. They need to basically to have some sort of a plan that when they're half back gets the ball from a puck out is where he puts it and they don't seem to have that plan. Billy Dunn decides to switch the play but Garrett Sinnott wasn't on the same wavelength and that ball is very close to the sideline. Sinnott gets there just in time, flicks it ahead of the Buffers Alley player that's over there beside him. Sean Murphy tackles him over here to Tommy Story, intercepted. Pat Kenny now. There's definitely no shortage of effort, particularly from Buffers Alley yet. Yeah, absolutely, you know. I thought Billy would have shot at the post, but I don't think Garrett was expecting that one. It was never going to be anything other than 100% effort from Buffers Alley. Anthony Roach, powerful line cut all the way up into the full forward line, but Kevin Roach was quickest to react again. Back as far as the goalkeeper, Darren O'Brien. Roach with the ball down here is Sean Murphy. Sent across towards Billy Dunn and Sean Murphy, the other Sean Murphy. Falls, Tommy Story tries to get it up, but Kieran Kenny is strong over it. Ball ricochets around still. Sean Murphy eventually gets clean possession of it outside. There's Chance for Buffers Alley to go on the attack again. Jack Toomey with the ball out towards Ross Donahue. Inside to Cormac Walsh. Ross Donahue now from his own 65 strikes it high and wide. I think both teams are struggling Ed, to get any sort of momentum or any sort of forward play going on at the moment. It's, it's very much like, a, I wouldn't say hit it and see what happens, but it seems to be very little offensive, good offensive play out there at the moment. Larkin Nimmo now flicks it but Seamus O'Hagan is there to intercept it 24 minutes gone here O'Hagan up towards Paul O'Leary Pat Kenny comes into support he's been very lively in the opening part of the game Connor Goff does well but then spills it scrappy play here Willie Doran adds to it up the line And there's a bit of a, a fracas here, Ed. Yeah, yeah, it's boiling over, but there's not, not too much in it. The first 
real incident of note. I think now we're probably, that's what everybody was expecting one at some stage in a match of this importance. But I think um, Barry did kind of come back with the hurl initially with the very first he was the instigator of it. So a yellow card for Barry Kyo. Yeah, he's going to give Willie Dorn one as well, I think. So, yellow card apiece there for Willie Dorn and Barry Kyo, and they go back into the full forward line to mark each other. Now we're going to see action. It's going to be a throw in. <laughs> there could be skin and hair flying here yeah. as David Jenkins is about to throw it in. Yeah. You probably would have been as well to let the line ball stand, Paul. Yeah, I yeah, think he's so. Probably only maybe asking for more trouble, that's all. Yeah. Ball gets clear fairly quickly, and Lorcan Nimmo plays it into the path of Conor O'Leary. Billy Dunn is off the shoulder, the hand pass is poor, and O'Leary fumbles it over the line for line ball. Intensity level has, has definitely increased, but we just wait now to see if just say, the, the skill of the national players themselves matches it. On O'Mara, back to John Farrell. Cleared up. Connor Goff does well, the sun was in his eyes, we could see him just shielding it there. Played up, Cormac Walsh wins this one. Plays it off to On O'Mara, takes it down well. O'Mara again, but for Zali Crowd, think that was a free, but that's a good layoff. Seamus O'Hagan now. Kearns takes the shot, takes the point. Yeah, great score. Young O'Mara has great legs, Peter, you know. He's causing all sorts of problems there on the move. Him and Cormac Wedge and into Seamus O'Hagan, great score. Ali two points up. First Kev goal of Wild for Buffer Zali, say, Peter, was it? Yeah, but it puts him into the two point lead, and now Owler have a line ball. 27 minutes gone. There's probably a point there that's really worth more than a point because it was yeah. even took there I mean, yeah, for the last five or six minutes and it was, it was a real kind of a, a big fill up there for Buffer Zali to actually be the next team to score. Conor O'Leary tapped that one or plays it back. Kevin Sheridan back to Conor O'Leary. Played across towards Nicky Kerwin, it misses Kerwin and Kevin Roach is there. Sent down towards Jack Roach who takes this one down. I think Anthony Roach ended up on the ground that time. Paul O'Leary ends up with the ball, played in towards Willie Dorn, there's a chance here. Ball towards Willie Dorn, Barry Kyo has to be careful, he's already on a yellow card. Conor Goff comes in in support. I think there might have been a foul there Paul. Yeah, it was very, very close to being a foul, but the referee didn't seem it that way. But I'd say no one would have argued if he had got a free in. Are out of wise to leave Barry Kyo one on one in there now when he has the yellow card? Yeah, that's, it's always a, a question you have to ask. Here's, Here's another, another ball one in. now. Willie Dorn is under it again. Can't get his arm up. And wide, the ball has been given wide. I don't think Willie was complaining too much about that one. I think I might have hit him on the helmet or the shoulder or something went out, but. Yeah, I know what you mean. Like it, all the take now was Willie to get one ball in there, and Barry might not have much option but to foul him again. At that stage, the referee will have a decision to make. But uh, if Buffer's Alley now to get one more score, like as much as the wind is a help, it, it's still hard. It's, it seems to be hard to score even with it because, as I said, it's not both teams are not playing the most fluent today. And every score is really hard earned. Dara Hayes across to Anthony Roach. Inside to Connor Goff, who almost had the ball passed behind him that time. Now it's sent in high and long and towards the edge of the square. There's three Buffers Alley men in there, two Owlard men. Kevin Roach flicks it away from Garrett Sinnott. Sinnott is over still. Two minutes of additional time. Garrett Sinnott with the shot, and that's a fine score, Paul. Yeah, it was a great score. Some that, listen, Owlard, the Malik really needed it there. And Garish, normally he's more accustomed to heading towards the goal but this thing was over his shoulder and, and maybe on his less uh, more stronger side but it was something that they really needed Cormac Walsh wins the puck out plays it out here towards Paul O'Leary but Kevin Sheridan cuts it across cuts across to win it
Battle for it at the far side. Murta Doyle onto it. Doyle carries it forward under a lot of pressure from Kieran Kenny. Kenny wins it back there for Buffers Alley. Flicked forward as far as Owen O'Mara. In turn, he tries to play it into Owen McNulty, but it goes too far. Owen Moore is there across to Garrett Sinnott. Tried to sort of half let it pass himself on the turn, but Ross Dunne, who was aware of that, took too many steps and uh, an unforced error, they call them in. Yeah, yeah. I'm surprised he didn't shoot first at all. I've never seen Gareth seen it looking his feet in a, in a long time. He looks really, really fit. It'd be hard stuff calling on the same, but I yeah. maybe Letter of Law, he taken over the four steps. But yeah, he, he maybe thought he was going to get blocked down on his right. Yeah. He's wanting more, I, I think he was looking for a much longer delivery to try to get on top of Willie and just give Owler a chance now to equalise, just come up to half time. Billy Dunn plays it nice, nicely over the bar. Yeah, he gets a lovely height on those frees. Seven points apiece here. 31 minutes gone. We'll have another play or two before halftime here in the Courtyard Ferns Intermediate Hurling Championship semi-final. The winner will play Timon Camros next week as Sean Murphy launches it long. It's too long for the full forward to win and it's too wide for it to be any use. And that's four wides now for Buffers Alley and four wides for Owlert. Anthony Roach plays it up to Jack Roach. Collision between Roach and Walsh. There's a, still a bit of a tangle over there. Willie Dorn turns and strikes it. And that's a score for Willie Dorn. Yeah, good score by Willie Dorn. The alley are going to go in a point ahead. They'll be delighted, you know. A lot of people would have said they wouldn't be able to, to live with Howler, but, you know, they've proved they're, they're well capable of living with him. Ball bounces off the hand of John Farrell. Seamus O'Hagan onto it now. Maybe they'll go in two ahead. Off here as far as Edward Harney. He just spills it. Conor O'Leary is there. Back as far as Anthony Roach. Long clearance up towards Nicky Kerwin. Kevin Roach tips it down. Jack Toomey is onto it. Returns it down here towards Paul O'Leary and Barry Kyo. O'Leary is fouled and a free to Buffers Alley. I think Barry's been a bit uh, over boisterous during his tackling and he kind of half got away with one for Willie but the referee was kind of quick to that one and I suppose Barry as I said he definitely want to watch it because he can't give away too many more fouls or it will be another card just for persistent fouling strikes this one I think he's pulled it a bit yeah I just know it's Jung O'Mara there who gave a fine display of free taking the other night was wanting to take that we're still going here in the first half that's a brilliant catch by Edward Harney and plays a pass back to John Farrell forward up the line there's three outer backs here. The man with the ball is Owen Moore. 34 minutes almost gone here in the first half. Moore switches it over towards Larkin Nimmo at the far side, but that's a fairly poor ball given all the time he had to play it yeah, forward. Yeah, yeah. There was no movement though, in fairness. Buffers Alley seem to have a push back quite a good bit and trying to hold on to this lead now coming up to half time. And they probably are making it hard for Owen Bally to get to get yeah, find the loose so. man up in their, the offensive half. We're still going here in the first half. 34 minutes gone. Connor Goff tries to flick it up. Lots of scrappy play there has been. And that's the end of the first half here in Chadwick's Wexford Park. Paul, two teams are evenly matched enough and it's all really going to come down to maybe a, a few crucial moments in the second half now to see which way it goes, I think. Yeah, listen, the, win, the big difference it's going to make is it's going to give the opportunity to the outer of the ballot to say strikers to try to score from long distance because both sets of backs seem to be well on top. But for Zalier, are definitely not going to leave him much space in, in the outer ballot full forward line half forward line so realistically it's whether they can maybe get on their shooters from distance knock over 7 or 8 points and play because 
I said score, score chance is going to be at a premium and then at the other end then basically it's whether Buffersali can work through the lines against the wind and I still think I think Buffersali will probably have to get a goal if they want to see this one out but I can imagine Buffersali are in a really good place going in a half time out of the Balak not overly upset but they'll need maybe to change something up a little bit to make sure that they're going to win this match so the two teams have made their way into their dressing rooms for their halftime team talks. We're going to take a little break here in the commentary box and we'll be back with coverage of the second half in a few minutes.
So there are about 70 or 80 players on the field for the start of the second half here. There are 30 players, 15 from Owlert and the Ballock and 15 for Buffers Alley and another 40 or 50 children, Ed. Yeah, I just see David Bo or Declan Buggy has been brought on. I'm not sure who's gone off. Declan is over there wearing number nine. Billy Dunn has gone centre forward. And I think everyone's going to really look forward to the second half. Peter, like half an hour, and uh, as I said, as Paul Gann said, he's going to try to bring some more to this or of, of some of them words. And in the first half, it seemed to be that way. Yeah, Tommy Story is gone. Declan Buggy is a very fit player. And the ball is in. Sean Murphy has it. Plays it back to Owen Moore. Long ball sent in towards the edge of the square. Breaks for Nicky Kerwin. The shot is could have been very easily a goal, Paul, but a point outer to take it at this stage. And the wood, the wood, the wood. It was a very important one. And just for Owlert, just to get back level straight away from momentum, but so I said, Nicky, he loves them chances and he's, he's, that's two of them he's got now and he's has, he has a point so far, but I guarantee if he gets a third one, it will end up in the net. And I suppose the bigger concern here now, I think, is that Darren O'Brien has hurt his back, has he? Yeah, he landed awkwardly on it. Hey, Nicky might be a little bit disappointed he didn't take a goal there or didn't oh. get the goal, maybe, yet. Oh, did Nicky Kerwin have a few years ago would have wrapped that up and I think, as Paul said, if he gets another one, he will. What a goal scorer he's been over the years, you know. But for Zali are sending their sub goalie to warm up, but I think Darren O'Brien is going to be okay, judging by the shapes he's making there. I think it was actually maybe uh, his own man, he was Kevin, was it? Actually, he might have just run into him, I think, maybe. It'll be very interesting to see what Buffers Alley do with these puck outs. Are they going to keep on going long, or will they eventually bring someone back to go short? Well, they've gone long this time, and Ross Donahue is the target. Anthony Roach breaks it away, but flicks it over the sideline. Lion ball for Buffers Alley. Oh no, Maris cut, he connects with it well, but it falls favourably for Murta Doyle and Owler to Balak. Doyle sends it in towards Nicky Kerwin. Again, Kevin Roach has been there, as he has been right beside Nicky's side for most of the game so yeah, far. Yeah, a good battle between the two of them. Even the last day in Belfield, it was a, a battle royale, you know. Declan Boogie off to Murta Doyle. And a point for Owlert, and they go into the lead, Paul. Yeah, and a little bit ominous there for Buffer Sally that they've only had the two attacks, and they've got two scores... And, and both teams found it so hard to score the first half that it's Buffer Sally can't keep giving up these chances or it'll be out of sight. Anthony Roach bursts onto this one at pace again. Lays it off to Murta Doyle and are Owlert beginning to turn the screw a little yeah, bit? Yeah, Murta Doyle has turned into the game and it's, it's the start of the second half. Darren O'Brien wins that one. Plays oh. a poor ball out. Declan Boogie is onto it. The shot from Boogie. Is over the bar, Ed. Yeah, Owlert are, are well back in this game. Three points in a row and a goal chance as well. So they're well on top for the first three minutes of the second half. It looks as though Owlert have upped their game a little bit combined with Buffers Alley maybe getting a little bit slack since the start of the second yeah, half. Yeah, I can imagine Owlert Ballard went in a point down at half time, but they definitely would have been happy with their performance and I'm sure uh, their mentors told that to the players as well. Sean Murphy with it. Launches it long again in towards Garrett Sinnott and Kieran Kenny. Kenny is fouled and a free out. But um, Buffer Zali, now I know they've only had a few puck outs, but Owler the Ballack nearly had a free man every single time in the first half to go short with. And it might have, the game might have suited just say, for the neutral, but it just meant that Buffer, Buffer Owler the Ballack gave up very many, and not too many easy chances where Buffer Zali are going long nearly all the time, and they don't seem to win much up here at all. This one is won by Pat Kenny. Can he be the man to launch Buffer Zali under attack? In the second half here, sends it in. High ball in towards Paul O'Leary. Ross Dunahoo is onto it. He slips. Sean Murphy has it now. Back to Declan Buggy. Clearance is down here towards Billy Dunn. I don't think Jack Toomey saw it, but Billy Dunn certainly saw it. In towards the goal, Darren O'Brien comfortably catches that one. Out to Kevin Roach, who plays a little bit of handball with it. Out here to Kieran Kenny. 
up towards Pat Kenny. Jack Toomey on it now. Edward Harney gets it up very, very neatly. He had a fine game on Wednesday night for the under-19s and their fantastic victory in the Premier Championship over the Fight Harriers inside to Paul O'Leary. Oh, I don't think it's gone wide. It's still in play, very close to the far corner. Seamus O'Hagan ends up on the ground and the ball is out for a line ball, I think, is it? No, it's actually gone or wide, wide. Gone wide, but that was a glorious chance there for Paul and I definitely think Buffer need a goal and he was very unlucky. But listen, I think I'm, I don't know how they got a flick to it or not, but it was, it was really, really close. Straight down the middle, this one breaks. Lorcan and Nimmo is onto it. Kieran Kenny tries to cover back. Gets right beside Nimmo, but Nimmo cuts inside. There's a chance of a goal here for Elder to Balak. Lorcan and Nimmo, a shot and a goal for Elder. Oh, what a goal by Lorcan and Nimmo. He went around Kieran Kenny. Not an easy task for any forward. That's a six point swing, Paul. Oh, very much so, yes. Yeah. I suppose for Sally Brown looking not to have a goal at the end, but no better team than Elder to Balak to capitalise on something like that. And they've had a few kind of close goal chances, and yeah. that was one where he made no mistake. It was a great finish by Lorcan. How can Buffers Alley respond? There's normally a, a response in a Buffers Alley team. Kevin Sheridan sends it down long. Again, Kevin Roach can't oh. see it, but Nicky Kerwin spotted it. And I said a few minutes ago, Ed, I asked you, were Elder beginning to turn the screw? The screw is well and truly well been turned Well and now. truly turned. It just totally only one team in it for the last six minutes, you know. The switch of Morta Doyle to midfield, he's got on four balls since the, mid since the start of the second half, you know, and... Howlers are well on top. Buffers Alley need a score now. Jack Toomey. Inside, Kieran Kenny. The Howler forwards are putting serious pressure on the Buffers Alley backs. Owen McNulty now plays it up to Seamus O'Hagan. Willie Dorn off to Owen O'Mara. Takes a nice looking shot. Just a little bit short. Dara Hayes gathers it under the crossbar out to Owen Moore 36 minutes gone here in the courtyard Ferns Intermediate Hurling Championship semi-final Sean Murphy takes it down off to Sean Murphy again from Lock and Nimmo and Murphy takes his point no yeah, it's wide. Wide. wide but that was a bit of an inexperience to think there by Edward like he had Jamie right in front of him 10 yards better off and he kind of took a shot where there was no real shot on him. Just a small bit of inexperience, but it says Buffers Alley are kind of maybe starting to feel the pressure now and panicking a small bit. But I think you're right about Sean Murphy. He's definitely uh, he's in trouble, I think. Yeah, he's the in trouble. The fellas have said we've had enough now. We need him to yeah. rest him for a week. Yeah. Martin Oak's story is a different type of trait now for the Alley to have to deal with. Ball down here. Connor Goff is trying to get it up, and so too is Connor O'Leary. Seamus O'Hagan has it up. Back to Jack Toomey. Toomey switches the play over in the direction of Ross Donahue, but doesn't connect with it well. And Outer have a back through Murta Doyle. He's fouled. Led off to Anthony Roach. Roach makes a bit of ground, but he's fouled as well. And we have a free for Outer to Ballock. Yeah, and. and, and there's a bit of a difference like Buffers Alley are still very direct against the wind here it's just not working at all they don't seem to have that kind of carrying through the lines threat that Elder Ballack had in the, in the first half and Elder and Ballack just seem to have the extra man back there no more and no matter what they're throwing at him they're happy enough up there at the moment and you'd be kind of thinking that maybe it's the game gone by him because I just don't see how they're going to be able to just to turn this score over and, and they'll have to completely change their style of play if they, if they don't have any chance in this probably a chance they'll have to take because it could be overturned dead coming out with it but yeah, this could the right ball is just not working no and this is going to put 7 points in it and Owler playing with the wind be very hard for a buffer side to come back without getting a goal anyway you know and Billy Dunn puts over that free 6 points now for him ball played forward here as far as Ono Mara he spills it Larkin Nimmo has it in towards Garrett's in it, but Kieran Kenny gets there first. It was a little tip of the hurl, and did Kenny swing back there? Maybe there wasn't yeah. an awful lot in it. I yeah, don't think. Small bit of a maybe a of Might be thrown in rather than anything more major, and I think the referee has yeah. made the right decision there. Frustration from Kieran Kenny, maybe that they've. Yeah. The problem is, I think Ross has been yeah. booked already, hasn't yeah. he? 
Yeah, Ross don't know who has a yellow card already. It's a little pet hate of mine. I think Ross was mo maybe a little bit higher than the ball was, but it is a pet hate of mine when the referee throws in a ball and gives a free for a lad trying Look, to pull on it. Look, you might as well say it's the end of the game now, you know. Seven points in it and Owler playing well with wins. He actually very quick as well, didn't he? He didn't yeah, even I know, but to set for I always think a throw in never solves anything. It, it, it always leads to something like this, you know. I think a better way of doing it would be similar to football, Paul. I'd actually throw it up. Yeah, yeah, I, I know what you mean exactly. Yeah, where it, and basically, you can only compete with it to try to catch the ball, maybe yeah. because it, if you're allowed fellas to swing with it, but yeah. it could easily be a rule change like yeah. that because every time, uh, but it's just a speeding through that one in. Yeah. I think caught both players nearly off off guard. Yeah. But yeah, that looks to be a major, major blow for Buffers Alley. They're seven points down, and uh, it looks as though there's a long, long, long way back for Buffers Alley now at this stage. But stranger things have happened. Billy Dunn has a chance now to put eight points between the sides with 20 minutes to go. And the referee is going to talk to someone in here, I think it's the goalkeeper. Seven points now for Billy Dunn. Maybe it's the umpires. It's hard to believe Buffer Sally were a point up ten minutes ago. I just found it a little bit strange that uh, into that second half, Buffer Sally had the lead, but they didn't play with it. They brought mm. nobody back. They still mm. played 15 on 15, starting to direct long balls in. It's just, just doesn't work like that. You know what I mean, like realistically, if you have your point or two lead, you're playing them to win. You just have to bring a man back, hold it as long as you can. Like they would have been quite happy if they had been even one, two, three points down with ten minutes to go. Mm. But to allow Euler the Ballack as much space as they've done, mm. like there was times where it was one on one in there, it was just madness. Mm. The referee now is talking to John Farrell and awards a yellow card. <laughs> Hook out breaks here, Edward Harney just about manages to keep it in play. Paul O'Leary tries to get away from Connor O'Leary. O'Leary carried it out over the line and a line ball for Buffers Alley. We have Rory lined up. Come on now, Peter. Give him another 15, 20 minutes before the final because I'd have to really make a call at this stage. Out of the Ballack basically are in the final. I just can't see any way that, that they're not going to win this match. And I said their biggest thing now would be how to get through the next 20 minutes with any more injuries. Realistically, the game is probably going to start petering off in the next five, ten minutes. And another thing they'll want to be wary of as well, Ed, is they don't want to get anyone sent off. Yeah, I was just like going that. to say that, Peter. You know, usually the, when when they like gets sent off, it, it's always uh, someone pulls a bit wrong. It's always tempting to send him off as well to even it up. You know, so that's why Ullerton need need to happen because I, I think I can't see any way back for Buffers Alley now. And Owlert might even play with a little bit more freedom given their lead as there's yeah. a foul over there. So Liam Walsh is coming in for Paul O'Leary on the Buffers Alley team. Yeah, he played really well when he it was introduced against Mount Claudy. He's going to have a tough time on it, on it. Kevin out there, that's for sure. Kevin, a tough, tough player on it. Oh, sorry, Anthony, not Kevin, sorry, my, my mistake. Anthony Ross can mixed up in the roaches and especially with the extra man back there as well. But listen, it's a great opportunity for Lean. And a good score from Darren O'Brien from the free. Struck it, struck it very well. Yeah, a good score from Darren. That's their first score of the second half. The second half is 13 minutes old. Long ball straight down the middle. Almost fell nicely for Billy Dunn, but it's, it's Cormac Walsh who has it now. Out to John Farrell. Played across here towards the new man in Neem Walsh, who is bet to it by Anthony Roach. There's an advantage being played to Owlert. And the uh, advantage wasn't accruing, so a free to Owlert. Yeah, Anthony Roach is having a good game. The two Roaches, in fact, are. Ron Kenny is down injured. 
He's holding that left calf. It's been giving him bother for the last few weeks, but yeah. you wouldn't have noticed it last week against Montlody. Yeah. Or tonight, indeed. He hasn't given Gareth Sinner very much change there no, either. No, no. Kieran is one of the greatest players to ever play with Buffer Sally. You know, he's, he's brilliant and he just sticks to his task. And for, as you say, for the last few years, he's been basically on one leg. With, he's hampered with injuries, but he, he, he's uh, given us everything now and uh, I'd say you want to see him replaced. David Malidi is, is warming up. Oh, true to form. Kieran is back again. Billy Dunn with the free here from the 65. And strikes it very nicely over the bar. That's eight points now for Billy Dunn. And eight points the difference, Peter. 45 minutes gone in the game here. Just a reminder that this year's streaming coverage is brought to you in association with Sharkies as the ball is brilliantly caught by Seamus O'Hagan. <coughs> and he can't keep it in play. A line ball for Elder. I think maybe he might be able to get himself a free, but yeah, this was great catch there by Shamey. He's he's not giving up any of it, but it's just with the extra man back there and, and the defence as good as Owlers is, it's just going to find it very very hard for Buffer Sally to get any real clear cut chances in this half. So Rory Jacob has been brought in for Conor O'Leary. The scoreline is Owler to Balak one fourteen, Buffer Sally nine points, an eight point lead for Owler to Balak. Ono Mara will be trying to reduce this down to. Seven if he can. And the Owler to Balak manager Shane O'Brien has been spoken to by David Jenkins. He must have either said something or stepped outside the box. So a yellow card for Shane O'Brien. Ono Mara to take the free. Strikes it well, but I think it might be drifting. And it's still 114 to Owler to Balak, nine points to Buffer Zali. Yeah, it's just Buffer Zali, they're, isn't they're struggling to score from play, pursuing to score from freeze. And as I said, even with 15 minutes to go, the game might kind of, I wouldn't say teetering out, but it's, it's just Owler to Balak going to be happy enough to hold where it is, eight, nine, seven, eight, nine, ten points. Declan Boogie wins that one from the rook and sends it over the bar. That's two points for him. Yeah, Declan's made a, a difference since he came in at midfield. The score is now 115 to 9 points to Elder to Balak. Edward Harney. One back here by Elder. Barry Keogh carries it forward, flicks it out here to Rory Jacob, his first impact on the game, Rory Jacob with the shot, and a point for Rory Jacob. Yeah, Rory Jacob, definitely a fan's favourite, and most of the other Ballick, well, everybody associated with the Ballick was, was loving that one going over the bar, and uh, what an impact sub to have. Although I'd say Rory won't be happy, he's probably not starting the final himself, but listen, um, it was a great score and a great finish, and it's just... You'd be hoping that it won't get too much worse now for Buffer Zali because they've had a great kind of a, a year so far and the, the, the won't want to end on, on, on a really comprehensive defeat. So let, let's just hope that they can just keep on going there for the next 15 minutes. And it's uh, one of the roaches down injured, Jack, I think it is. It's Jack, yeah. And uh, hopefully he'll be able to continue. But Niall Redmond has been ready to, to come on. Of course, things are going well overall in, in Owler this season as well. Their second team is in the Intermediate A semi-final tomorrow, so they won't be wanting to use any more of those lads when they have this game. Looks as no. though they have this game in the bag, I of course. Think to, I think they've used 22 or 3, so I don't think they'll have to dip into that team, and especially, as you say, as they're winning comfortably, you know, 10-point lead, 116 to 9 points. Jack Roach seems to be OK to continue. 10-point lead for Owler to Balloch. Darren O'Brien with that lowish puck out up towards Willie Dorn, but again Owler to win it back there. Connor Goff, it's blocked down by John Farrell. 
I think it's very fair to say that the five lads that played Wednesday night, you know, it's a very hard ask for them to perform well tonight, you know. Kevin Sheridan plays it inside to Murta Doyle. And Murta calmly taps that one over the bar for his second score of the game. Yeah, between just in the match itself and at a step up in class, listen, it is, it is a really big jump. And I suppose mentally as well as physically, it was a really, really big ass. But I suppose if the competition was there to be won in the long run, maybe it's Buffers Alley needed to win and they needed to win at that grade as well to keep these fellas going. A ball across from Jack Toomey has very much gone astray, but Cormac Walsh is there to win it back for Buffers Alley. The hand pass is a bit heavy, but Seamus O'Hagan is still endeavouring to get it up and he's fouled. Good work by O'Hagan and a chance for Buffers Alley. He's definitely not let them down anyway. I mean, he's, he's, as I said, he's probably starting to feel the pinch as well a little bit, but he's carrying the fight now to Eric Dabalik. It started off, it was going to be like the match in uh, Belfield, you know, but it has fizzled out and Eulers are well on top now. fantastic crowd here there would have been some atmosphere if this was a point or two going into the last 10 minutes yeah. there really but quick free I suppose ifs and buts yeah. look I can't understand that the alley needed to get uh, get more scores on the board like you know yeah. you need to be 20 metres away when a free yeah. is taken and uh, but when things are going wrong for you things like that are going to happen you know and they're all great young players and they're going to be great players but they just took the wrong option there and for most teams I think coming to a final fellas will be saying it's probably not great if they weren't tested but I think this is ideally what Outer yeah. Valak actually need going into the final because they know themselves kind of how good they are how good they can be yeah. and for them to get through with no real injuries and listen I'm, yeah. I'm sure they're going to be right no matter what happens next weekend oh, yeah. and that free from Dara Hayes has gone out and into the terrace Jack Toomey carries it out long hand pass forward on McNulty Cuts back inside. Off to Owen O'Mara. Good work by O'Mara. Sends it in towards Liam Walsh. And uh, a free to Owler to Ballock. Yeah, it's, just, it's asking an awful lot on Liam to, to try to cope with Anthony during them type of balls. There's, there's not much more Buffers Alley can do, but it's just Anthony's a very, very rock solid cornerback. One of the best out there. A scoring chance here from Dara Hayes from play, but again the shot has gone well off to the left so David Malidi in for Owen McNulty Cook out 10 cents short here to Pat Kenny down towards Liam Walsh doesn't control it Barry Kyo plays a poor hand pass Owen O'Mara now and that shot looks good, a good score from Owen O'Mara. It's now 117 to 10 points. Yeah, and Owen is carrying the fight as well, isn't he? He's yeah, good, and he looks to be points. hampered maybe with a calf problem as well, but, but Owen is lively enough out there now, and he's, he's definitely not have to give it up. Good catch by John Farrell. He just gave Martin Oak story enough of a nudge in the back, not for it to be a foul, and it sets Buffer Sally on the attack, but that hand pass from Willie Doran is poor. Owen Moore now opens the shoulders, and it's sort of target practice now for Outerton in some cases and they need a bit yeah, more practice yeah. I think yeah you know when things are going wrong things are going wrong unfortunately and uh, you know Willie Dorn usually will be dead accurate with that one more now met up strongly with Pat Kenny and Liam Walsh and Moore was the judge to have fouled there Paul I think in my judgement I might have thought the other way but yeah listen I don't even think he I don't think he bars already overcarried so I found that very strange and yeah like out of the back they haven't plenty of the ball alright but they definitely have to work on their long range shooting because it's been very poor now in the last maybe 5-10 minutes but uh, maybe it's just the concentration level has dipped and the intensity definitely has dipped and as I said I just think I think both teams are just on this to end kind of end as, as much as they'd like to play on a bit more it's just 
as I said, Buffers Alley, they know that the game is up and Owner Bannock just wants all they're thinking about now is a final next weekend against the Cameras. And Adam Re Mac Redmond has just been brought in for Nicky Kerwin as Owen O'Mara sends that one in and over the bar. A fine score from him. Six minutes to go here in Chadwick Swexer Park in the courtyard. Ferns Intermediate Hurling Championship semi final. A great catch by Rory Jacob. Rose really high to gather that one and turns, swings it in, but it's going to the right and wide. Eight wides for Eulert. The score remains 117 to 11 points. Darren O'Brien short to Kevin Roach with the puck out. Sent up the middle this time. Batted away by Declan Boogie. David Malidi just gets there ahead of Martin Oak's story, but spills it over the sideline. I think it's going to be a hard team for Owler to pick next week. Uh, all our subs have done well since they came on. You know, Bogey and a heavy tackle on Declan Boogie that time and a free for Outer to Balak. Shane Granell is being ready to for Buffers Alley as Billy Dunn takes the free and puts it over the bar. Nine points now for Billy Dunn. Yeah, after two, missing two frees in the first half, he's been on earning since. 118 to 11 points. Kevin Roach plays it forward. Declan Boogie is there again. I think he's made a massive difference in the yeah, game. Yeah, really. absolutely. Edward Harney forward into the corner. Willie Dorn chasing after it. Gets there first, but Owen Moore is right alongside him. And a foul on Moore, the free out for Owler to Balak. Declan Boogie probably would, have, would he been expected to start like himself? yeah well he was named he was named to start and he played senior because I would last that year he would be on Edward's first 15 but he had a great game games. on Lee Chin last year yeah. in the first round of the championship you know Dara Hayes launches this one long down towards Garrett Sinnott Kieran Kenny and Sinnott have had a good battle Rory Jacob flicks it out into a bit of space for himself and decides to play it over the bar two points now for Rory Jacob Shane Granell has been brought in for Willie Dorn. It's hard on Willie Dorn, you know, playing with uh, 14, just 14 uh, at 40 years of age. So a well earned break for a great servant to Buffer Sally. Hook out down towards Shane Granell. Breaks to the ground. Declan Boogie has it up. There's a bit of a chop on him. Pat Kenny is going to be spoken to by the referee. 119 to 11 points. And while the referee is speaking to Pat Kenny, just apologies for the early technical difficulties on this game. Um, as far as I know, the full game will be put up on YouTube for everyone to watch later on as well. So you'll be able to look back on it. Um, so apologies again for the difficulties we've had this evening. Niall Redmond is in. And Murta Doyle is off. I think Martin can be happy with his contribution. Yeah, particularly in the second half when he moved to midfield, uh, Paul. I think he's been very good. And this free from Billy Dunn has been sent wide, so the scoreline remains 119 to 11 points. Short puck out. Onamara up towards Pat Kenny. Kenny did well on his knees to get that one up. Needs support now. And the ball is going to be brought up. Two minutes to go now and uh, Michael Butler and Bobby Kenny are being readied by Buffers Alley as well. Darren O'Brien plays a forward to Owen O'Mara. It's either lobbed in or the shot but I think it's too heavy. I suppose, just a, Ed, you've mentioned the likes of Kieran and Willie and even Shane Grannells and all. It's, it's how Buffers Alley integrate a lot more than winning 19's team into that team next year and the year after now is where yeah. it's, it's what's going to either drive them on or not yeah. because it's like a time waits for, for no man and 
basically they, they have plenty of talent there but it's trying to get them to yeah. probably really become intermediate or, or, or senior hurlers in the future is their biggest challenge now and the same problem exists for Owlert I suppose they have a lot of older stagers that they're going to have to gradually phase out I suppose for the want of a better word and they'll need to be replaced by younger up and coming yeah. men as well Ed uh, yeah absolutely Peter but you know you'd always rather be up senior to be able to do that you know and when you can get a young lad into a senior team it's much easier for him to become a senior hurler obviously you know Kevin Roach plays it in towards Liam Walsh Owen Moore now plays it back down towards Rory Jacob into Niall Redmond flicked away from him by Owen O'Mara back here with Kevin Roach good ball forward to Pat Kenny played in towards Shane Granell does well there's a good chance here for Buffers Alley flicked away by Kevin Sheridan Seamus O'Hagan is onto it I think I don't think there was an awful lot in that really but no. it's it's academic at this stage, but I don't think it was a free out, really. No. But as you say, it doesn't matter what we think, Peter. It's what the referee thinks. He's the man in charge. But a very disappointing the second half, you know. It's, it's yeah, I think oh, it's one twelve to three points. Put it to bed very early, you know. Yeah. They went for the juggler five minutes in the game. From the second five half minutes into the, the second over. half, yeah. One twelve to three points the score will be in the second half, Peter, you know that's and as much as you'd like to think maybe they Bob Sally kinda of went for it themselves to be to be very few teams out there at the moment wouldn't have set up with that extra man yeah. into that win for the second half and just see if they can just eke it out a little bit. Yeah, well when the when the man got sent off, when Ross Dunham sent sent off it was game over. Man has made an impact since he came on anyway. Gets himself a card. He's kind of unfortunate there. He probably thought if he had caught that ball, it would have been a good goal chance for him. At least five minutes, at least five minutes additional time. We have five minutes of additional time here. I don't think it's going to be enough for Buffers Alley. I think they'd need maybe 25 minutes of additional time, unfortunately, for them. But Ian Story has been brought in for Owler Tabalock, and he's in, in place of Connor Goff. Dara Hayes launches it high and long again. It's gone way off to the left. As much as Owl have scored the 119, they can't be happy with their, uh, with the way and basically they've hit all these a lot of wides and awful lot of needless silly wides. Pulled on by Anthony Roach. I think it ricocheted back or something hit him in the face there. He's holding his face, but the ball is over here in the middle. John Farrell now met up strongly by Jack Roach, hooked by Anthony Roach. Owen Moore now switches it over here towards. Adam McRedmond. McRedmond shows good pace, chance of a score, just stumbles. If this would be a fantastic score, but he stumbled a bit too much and the ball has gone off to the left. All the substitutions, number three, or what was that substitution first? Number three, Kieran Kenny, and Facebook 22, Bobby Kenny. Second substitution, number four. Kevin Roach, Minor, by 23, Michael Butler. So 20, Bobby Kenny is in for Kieran Kenny, and 23, <laughs> Mick Butler is in for number four, Kevin Roach. Yeah, I think, think Kieran done as well as anybody on Gareth Sinish. He kept him to one point. 119 to 11 points, the score remains here. Two and a half minutes of the five minutes of injury time still to play. Anthony Roach has gone down injured. Ball breaks here to Martin Oak Story. Good flick from Story. Chance of a score here, and that's a mighty score by Martin Oak Story. Yeah, another guy now who's going to be putting down the marker to make sure he starts in that final. And uh, listen, we know what impact he can have as well coming off the bench. So yeah, Owler the Ballack can have a, a lot of a lot of just hit. The only problems they're going to have now, as you said, Ed, is that starting 15. What's it going to be? Yeah. 
So Anthony Roach and Larkin Nimmo seem to be okay. He was a big lost owler last year, Anthony Roach, I thought, Peter. Uh, he, he he carried an injury for the for the, I think the whole season really. It was a good few outer players seemed to have knocks and niggles towards the end of last year's championship. Yeah. And it really played against them in the end. They hadn't the bodies really, and they didn't no. get the look of the draw either. I suppose. No. Do you remember as, uh, Declan Buggy was hampered badly with an injury in the relegation final. Remember. As they say, you make your own look. They've responded very well since coming down to intermediate. They've won all their games and they're in the county final now next week. And so. I suppose if they do win the county final next week, they'll have proven that last year was the was the exception yeah, rather well than the rule. I, I felt even last year, Peter, they were too they were too good for intermediate, and it looks like uh, I'm going to be proven right on, on, unless Timon come with something. Timon were very impressive in the first game, and this one is here with Bobby Kenny. Can't get it away from Larkin Nimmo. Pulled on. Murta Doyle now, Anthony Roach lofts it forward towards Garrett Sinnott. That one is Miss Hayton. The crowd are beginning to leave here. There's 20 seconds of the five minutes left. 120 to 11 points. Souther to Ballock lead here against their rivals and opponents. Buffers Alley and Jack Toomey is penalised for overcarrying. Yeah, it's 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 a funny one. As I said, Souther to Ballock are winning by. 23 points up 12 23 to 11 12 points up they're uh, they've been basically in half trot I'd say for the last 15 minutes but you still wouldn't be overly happy with their forward play backs yes I mean they've had extra man back there and they look very very comfortable but I still wouldn't be overly happy with the way their forwards are played but in saying that like anybody who would be predicting kind of it's one win next week would be I wouldn't say it'd be foolish but if you just go through the results from the start of the year to the end of the year you go through farm lines. It's going to be very hard to say any less than probably a 10 or 15, a 10 point win, in my opinion, for Euler the Ballack in the final. But in saying that, Timon Cameras are there on Murrit in the final, but it just seems to be a step ahead of anything else in this grade. So it's all over here, and it's all over for Buffers Alley for this season for them as Euler the Ballack proved victorious here. 121 to 11 points, Ed. Impressive in the second half from Owlert. I suppose you could say they were decent in the first half and they were quite impressive in the second half. Yeah, look, the first seven or eight minutes of the second half, this is where Owlert put this game to bed, you know. They'll go in as, as uh, massive favourites, I, I presume, against Timon, but I was very impressed with Timon in the first half and, you know, the likes of Barry O'Gorman and all, I'll have a right, a right call at this, but... We always must remember that one third of this team today played in a county final last Wednesday night, so that's very hard. But Buffers Alley will be a year older, a year wiser, and a year better next year. And it's uh, it's the end of the road for them for 2022. But when they look back on it in a few weeks' time, they'll be happy enough with their year as well. Because a few weeks ago, it looked like they weren't going to even get out of the group. So they've they've done really well. They certainly have. But for now, it's. Owler to Balak who continue their march back towards senior with very good performance here in Chadwick's Wexford Park. They'll take on Timon next week and that'll be a mighty challenge for Timon in particular. It'll obviously be a challenge for Owler but if Timon managed to pull it off Paul it'd be one of the greatest turnarounds. I know they were missing lads the last time they played Owler but the scoreline I think was 7.28 to 10 points when Owler beat them in the group stages and it'd be some turnaround if Timon were able to pull it off. It would be, it'd be probably equal. I, th- I think the last time something like that happened was maybe four or five years ago in Belfield in the first round. I think it was Senior Hurling Championship match where St. Martin's could have beaten the Anns by 30 odd points, from what I remember, in, in the very first match in that group stage. And from what I remember, I think St. Anne's actually beat them in the knockout stages of that of that year and then Senior Hurling. I could be wrong, but. I think they might have lost in the county final in the oh, end. Oh, they, oh, they, oh, they oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Very, 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 very close. Three game. Or something yeah, yeah. In, I think maybe. And, and that was as close. Well, then I suppose that was as close as turnarounds as you see, but. Listen, I can't say I'm putting my neck on the line here. Of course, I I can't see how You're anybody. Your neck on the I, line I, I can't see. Elder, you? I can't see anybody who wouldn't go for Euler. But listen, Timon Timon cameras are there, and I just think that they'll probably over over. Uh, I won't say overachieved, but from the start of the year, you'd have to call it square that no one would have seen Timon cameras in a final. And in my opinion, if they can stay within ten, it's, it, it is going to be a bonus for them because the Euler the Balak are so experienced. There's so many players to come on. They can win games either direct. They can go short. They can go long. And the beating is most of them are winners. And the pressure, just like being in, the, in your first county final, probably, as you said, intermediate. Fin- I don't know if they have been intermediate finals before, but it is, a, it is a very, very big deal for someone who's never been there before. 
there's going to be a big crowd here they're going to be under awful awful pressure and you would just hope that they'd be in the game maybe after 15-20 minutes because Ireland have done uh, jobs on lots of teams and they just don't listen, they don't do mercy in Ireland the Balak. and if they can beat you by 20 points they will and fair juice them that's why they have so many senior titles so and it's hoping that for Timon Cameron's sake that they turn up and they turn up and they give it as, as good as they get or as good as they can get for as long as they can get but listen to Ireland the Balak, even though they're only at half throttle today they still won by 12 points and they look very very comfortable about them by that margin they certainly did so that's all for our coverage from today. Again, apologies that you probably didn't enjoy it as much as other days with the technical issues we had at the start, but um, we hope you enjoyed it once we got going fully and properly again. And we hope you'll tune in again tomorrow for coverage of the senior semi-finals. Four o'clock, St. Martin's against Nevena. And six o'clock, we have Rapparees against Fern St. Aidan. So we'll talk to you again then. <laughs>